there are just a few topics from, I think it's from high school geometry or high school mathematics that I feel are so important. So let me tell you about the arithmetic geometric means. Now the arithmetic mean is something that you know under the name average. So you can take the arithmetic mean or average of a number of numbers. You can say seven and 13, what's their average? Well, you add them and then divide by the number of numbers added, it looks like it's 10. Um, you can you can do that with three numbers, right? Um, let me make it a little bit more interesting. So we can do that with three numbers. We can add them and then divide by the number of no numbers uh, that were added. So I think it's 75 over three. Think the numbers are right. Let's see. Okay. Now, what this is, and so on, you can do it with four numbers, five numbers, and so on. So, what it is, it's basically in a way it's ironing out. Imagine that, I don't know, there are five people, people in the room, and everyone puts their money on the table. Some have more than others but we, they just put it all together and then they split it into five equal shares and they go home with that. That's, that's, a little, that's a little bit what average is. It's basically for seven and 13, can you come up with two numbers with the same sum, but they are identical and that would be 10 and 10. 10 and 10 has the same sum as seven and 13. Uh, 25, 25, and 25 has the same sum as 17, 6, and 52, but they are equal. So it's basically we're evening out the data under the operation with respect to the operation addition. And so the geometric mean is very much like that, but the operation is multiplication. So for example, if you look at 2 and 18, the arithmetic mean is easy, 2 plus 18 divided by 2, 20 over 2, that's 10. But what would be the geometric mean? 10 and 10 are two numbers that when you add, you get the same sum as 2 plus 18. Now, what about getting two numbers identical? So it's really just one number, but their product is the product of 2 and 18. But that would be 2 times 18 under the square root, right? Well, I intentionally read the numbers to be nice. So six and six are two numbers identical that have the same product as two and 80, right? And we can do that with three numbers. We can flatten out with respect to multiplication three numbers. Um, it's just we're gonna multiply the three numbers. Okay, this is not gonna be pretty at all. Uh, we're gonna multiply the three and then we take the third root. So the geometric mean would be five times 12 times 42, the third root of that. <clears throat> so there is a third, third root in this calculator, but it might be just easier to punch into the one third power. That is third root. Five times 12 times 42, 13.6-ish. Now, 13.6, when raised to the third power, will give us the same product as 5 times 12 times 42, which I forgot to 25, 20. Okay. Now, you can take the geometric mean of four numbers, multiply them, and then take the fourth root. So it's evening out the data, but with respect to multiplication. There is one complication, though. We cannot take square root and fourth root of negative numbers. So we agree that the geometric mean, whether it's an odd number of numbers or even number of numbers, is always defined for non-negative numbers only. So negative numbers cannot, we cannot take the geometric mean of negative numbers. So the definition is, if A and B are non-negative numbers, so zero is okay, then the arithmetic mean of A and B is square root of AB. 
And then let's say we have A1, A2, A3, A5, and so on, An. So we have n many numbers. The geometric mean is that, what would be the algebraic? It would be this plus that plus that divided by n. The geometric mean is going to be the nth root of the product of all these numbers. So the geometric mean is nth root of a1 times a2 times all the way to a to the n. There are analogous ideas, it's just under different operations. For example, if you take, if you start with two equal numbers, then the arithmetic mean is going to be the number again, right? 5 plus 5 over 2 is going to be 5. Same thing with the geometric, 5 times 5 under the square root is going to give you back the same 5. So that's another similarity. But going back to the nice numbers, 2 and 18, the arithmetic mean is 10 and the geometric mean is 6. Mm, let's try to some less pleasant numbers. Say if we, if we just randomly make them up. Let's say 15 and 72. Now the arithmetic mean is 15 plus 72 divided by 2. And that's 87, isn't it? 87 over 2, and that's 43 and a half. The geometric mean is going to be the square root of 15 times 72, which is approximately 32.86. Now, it is, I think it is easy to suspect that if you take the arithmetic mean of some numbers, that average is going to, going to be somewhere in between. It cannot be smaller than the smallest data or larger than the largest piece of data. And that is true for, for the geometric mean as well, right? Both 10 and 6 are in between these two numbers, and so is 43 and a half and 32 and change. But what's interesting is that the geometric mean is always smaller, well, almost always. So the arithmetic geometric uh, means theorem states just that. So it states that if A and B are greater than or equal to zero, so we can take their geometric mean for sure, then square root of AB is always less than equal than A plus B over two. And the equality, this equality here, and the equality holds if and only if A equals to B. All right, so let's prove it. Now, it's very important to understand that inequalities are touchier. You cannot just multiply uh, both sides by a number. You have to worry about positive or negative. Because if you multiply inequality by a negative number, we have to flip the inequality sign. Same way, if you think about it, you cannot just go around and square an inequality. For example, negative 5 is less than 2, but that's not going to remain true if you square both sides, right? But once we establish yeah, this squares to 25, this squares to 4, it's not, it's not working. But once we establish that both sides are positive in an inequality, that, then you can actually square both sides uh, of the inequality because the smaller one is going to have a smaller absolute value. So if A, B are both non-negative and A is less than or equal than B, then it will follow that square root of it. For that that A squared is going to be less than or equal to B squared. But we have to first make sure that we're talking about non-negative numbers. So again, negative numbers would be tricky. So I don't know, there, is two th there are two things. There is, there is how we get the idea and then how we present it. We present it pompously, uh, eloquently, but that's not how we get the ideas. Oftentimes we sweat bullets for it and we're shameless and uh, do horrible things to get the ideas. So I'm gonna show you how we get the idea and then presenting it, it's not gonna be difficult. You just write down every line backwards. So basically we, we would wanna start with a true statement and arrive to this. Well, let's do it. Let, let's do it a little bit in an opposite way. Let's see what happens if we mess with this. So if we start with square root of AB is less than equal than A plus B over two, and maybe we are gonna clear the numerator by multiplying both sides by two, then we're gonna get two square root of AB is less than equal than A plus B. But these two definitely are true at the same time. If one is true, the other one is true as well, right? And now we're gonna square both sides 
We establish no negative number inside, so we can do that now. The left hand side squares to 4ab, and the right hand side is a plus b squared, which is a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. And then when we subtract 4ab, something lovely happens. Plus 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So when we subtract this 4ab from both sides, what happens is this plus turns into a minus. And that here is the square of a minus b. And now look at this statement. We state that a and b could be any non-negative number. If I take a minus b and square, it's going to be non-negative. And it's going to equal to 0 when a equals to b, right? This statement is obviously true. And the equal is if and only if a equals to b. If is, if is short for if and only if. And then what we do is we present things backwards. Like out of the blue, I just thought of this. And when this is true, this is true. And this is true, this is true, and so on. So these things are true and false at the same time. And this one is always true, as long as a and b are non-negative numbers. Actually, if you look at the last line, even that's not uh, required. So the geometric, the arithmetic geometric means uh, theorem says that the arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean, and they are only equal if the data you started with A and B are equal to each other. And these statements can be generalized for three numbers, means arithmetic and geometric, four numbers, and so on. And actually, that's quite useful. For example, in calculus, you're going to learn something called optimization, where you're given some conditions very similar to a word problem, but instead, but then at the end, instead of, well, find when this quantity is 20, instead of that, you're going to be asked, well, consider all possible values of this expression and find the, the lowest one or the highest. Find the maximum or minimum of an expression. And the arithmetic geometric mean is a very, very good tool. So, for example, suppose x is positive. And we want to find uh, the minimum value. So the smallest, smallest possible value of x and 5 over x. Then actually, this can be found using the arithmetic geometric means. Um, and it goes like this. Let's apply the arithmetic geometric means theorem to these two numbers. x times 5 over x under the square root is less than or equal than x plus 5 over x over 2. Mm, x cancels, multiply by 2, 2 times square root of 5, or square root of 20, if you like, is less than or equal than x plus 5 over x. So no matter what x is, it's always going to be greater than or equal than this number. So this is going to be the minimum value, and it can be achieved just as long, and it can be achieved just as long as x and 5 over x are equal. And so we can check if x is square root of 5, then square root of 5 plus 5 over square root of 5 is square root of 5 plus, this is, this is a little homework for you, why is this just square root of 5? 5 is square root of 5 squared, and then we divide out one, one square root of 5. There it is. But that's not a value that you can just stumble into by trial and error, right? So if these two quantities, we could minimize the sum because their product was a constant. And if the sum is a constant, then we can find the maximum value of their product. But that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg. There, is, there are lots of lots of other applications. But what I'm going to tell you right now is why it's called the geometric mean, because it's all over the place in geometry. Now, we have been looking at right triangles, and we agreed that right triangles uh, have a um, happy accident, that these two angles add up to 90. And that's part of the reason why when we draw in the height belonging to the hypotenuse, we split the triangle into two triangles, right angled and similar to the original one. This is 90, this is beta, forcing this one to be alpha, and this is beta. We've, we've seen that. but now. It's a very useful um, fact, and after a while, you're going to be able to just, you're just going to remember it, that H is the geometric mean of A and B. And it's just a very easy ratio problem with similar triangles. Those of you who are already experts in triangle trigonometry, just tangent alpha for this triangle and this triangle will do. 
basically the side opposite alpha divided by the side opposite beta is this ratio in this small triangle, opposite alpha sits A, opposite beta sits H, and the same ratio in this bigger triangle here, opposite alpha sits, sits H, opposite beta sits, sits B. And so we get that A over H equals to H over B. So when we cross multiply, we get that H squared equals to AB. There it is. There are two other geometric means in just this triangle. If I recall it correctly, this side is the geometric mean of this line segment and the whole hypotenuse. And that's not hard to prove either. Let's see if we can do it here for this x. So the ratio we're going to use is opposite. So opposite alpha, the side opposite alpha divided by the hypotenuse. Now in this small little triangle, that ratio is opposite alpha sits A and the hypotenuse is X. Now we're gonna apply the same thing, uh, the same ratio to the original triangle, the whole thing. So then opposite alpha sits X and the hypotenuse is A plus B or C in this case, uh, the hypotenuse, I'm gonna say A plus B. And that it is X squared is the product of, of, of A times A plus B. So there is a there is a plus b. The geometric mean of these two lengths is this length. Okay. All right. This is, this is a good time to start. Expect the geometric mean to pop up all over the place in in trigonometry. It's gonna it's gonna show up a lot. Thank you for watching.